Uh, thank you very much. It's always uh, very interesting to give a talk after such a uh, uh, stimulating and uh, vi vi vibrant variation of talks around uh, around today. So uh, the topic that I'm going to present today is around the urban environment and uh, mental health. And the reason why I'm interested in, in this topic is because there is a rapid uh, increase of urbanization. UN has estimated that by 2050, almost two thirds of the world's population will live in urban areas. On the on the same hand in hand, we are observing as well that there is a rapid increase in common mental disorders over the same period of, uh, of time, and which is, cannot be only explained by heritability, by genetics, but there must be environmental influences that we try to disentangle with that. So with these topics in mind, uh, we, uh, we embark here in KCL to uh, try to uh, use different elements of urbanicity uh, which could be the social environment or the built environment. So in this case, we are interested in the built environment. Uh, and we uh, linked high resolution air pollution data uh, by using uh, atmospheric dispersion models, which are held here in the environmental <laughs> research group. And noise metrics, uh, annual daytime and nighttime noise metrics, with uh, a longitudinal mental health survey uh, uh, based here at uh, IOPPN which is called the Southeast London Community Health Survey, which we have uh, two waves of 1,698 uh, individuals participating, and with over 200,000 uh, clinical, electronic uh, clinical records provided by the clinical, uh, interactive, uh, clinical record interactive search database. So uh, by linking these two uh, resources and by uh, using data from the uh, Southeast London Community Survey, uh, we provided uh, strong evidence of an almost uh, two-fold uh, increase in the risk of common mental disorders uh, per uh, quartile uh, per, uh, by comparing the top quartile with the bottom uh, quartile of specific uh, increase in air pollutants such as NO2, NOx, and PM2.5. And we observed the same associations with psychotic uh, experiences as well. And we are talking about an urban population where we uh, have the contrast of variation or exposure is from high air pollution to very high air pollution. Uh, we are not only interested on the medium term aspects of urbanicity, uh, we're trying to look at that over uh, the life course by utilizing historical, uh, by utilizing data from historical birth cohorts like the 1946 uh, birth cohort, uh, or, or else the National Survey for Health and Development, uh, where in this case we are interested in uh, observing how uh, exposure to neighborhood deprivation could have enough, could, could affect mental health over the life course. And in this case, uh, we, uh, we look at neighborhood deprivation and we observe that uh, for, uh, for the participants of the 1946 birth cohort, which now they're reaching the age of 73, if they lived in a deprived, if they lived, if they continue living, or they moved to an area which was continue being deprived before the age of uh, 25, we could observe that these effects remain on their mental health symptoms in uh, adulthood, in early adulthood, in uh, in midlife, and even in uh, in later life. Uh, and this is more about capturing the lifetime exposure of that, and. Uh, we are also interested in how we can capture short-term effects of uh, urbanicity. So in this, uh, in this aspect, we developed an app, which is, uh, which is called the Urban Mind. Uh, with, uh, this is led by, the professor, uh, by, by Professor Andrea Michelli on the Department of Psychosis uh, Studies. And, and with this app, we're monitoring in real time um, um, the uh, the mental well-being uh, of uh, the participants who are voluntarily downloading the app. And also we are measuring uh, the self-reported uh, uh, environmental aspects of, uh, aspects of their environment as they're reported uh, in the app. Uh, and uh, we usually, uh, last year we uh, published, um, uh, we published pilot uh, data on, uh, on uh, different aspects of the environment which we derived through the app in relation to mental well-being, where uh, we observed, uh, uh, in this case, uh, an impact of nature or mental well-being of the participants. So, for example, 
if you are, have a good contact in nature, if you are outdoors compared to be indoors, or if you can hear birds, we, we show some like associations with mental well-being, uh, meaning that uh, meaning that if in the morning you are exposed to, to nature, uh, these effects could follow you throughout the day and probably during, uh, during afternoon uh, time. Uh, we are now in the second version, uh, we, are, we are now, the second version of the app is being, uh, is being launched and we are actually funded by the MRC to, uh, uh, to, uh, to use the app in a clinical population where we are trying to, uh, to look at uh, relapse at psychosis relapse to predict psychosis relapse by using uh, the specific tool. And this is not only me, this is a long list of collaborators which we are working on. Unfortunately, we have another slide to mention them. Thank you very much.